Raiders of the Lost Ark is the first movie in the Indiana Jones franchise. Released in 1981, the film would become a box office hit. In fact, it would be the highest grossing film of the year and would lead to a further four films. The character of Indiana Jones, portrayed by Harrison Ford, has become a pop culture icon, while his theme song is perhaps one of the most recognisable pieces of movie music. To say the least, I am quite a big indie fan. For aircraft enthusiasts, Raiders also features quite a few different aircraft, and in this video, let's examine the movie and explore the history behind these aircraft. It should be noted that this video is not designed to be a summary of the movie. It is designed to focus on the aircraft featured in the film. As a result, some plot points will either be summarised in not enough detail or completely skipped over. Also warning, there will be spoilers ahead. Before we jump in, let's set the scene a little bit. Raiders of the Lost Ark is set in 1936 and follows the story of American archaeologist Indiana Jones as he battles against the Nazis to find the Ark of the Covenant. It is not long into Raiders that we get our first shot of an aircraft. Following Indy's attempt to recover an idol from a Peruvian temple and then his subsequent escape from that temple, Indy is caught by rival archaeologist René Balloch. Fleeing Balloch and the native tribe, Indy runs down a hill to a river where a float plane sits awaiting for him. With the native tribe hot on his heels, Indy uses the float plane to complete his daring escape from Balok. The aircraft utilised in this shot is a Waco UBF-2, and this is the first aircraft that we will explore in today's video. The UBF-2 was a model from the Waco F series of aircraft of the 1930s designed to replace the O series of aircraft Waco had produced during 1927 to 1933. The F series differed from the earlier model by being some 5 inches shorter and having a wingspan 7 inches shorter and it weighed some 450 pounds lighter than the O series. The F series would have accommodation of 3 and when introduced was offered in 3 different models. The INF with a 125 horsepower Kinner engine, the KNF with a 100 horsepower Kinner engine, and the RNF with a 110 horsepower Warner Scarab engine. The Waco F series proved to be very popular among pilots, providing a good mixture of performance and carrying capacity while being reasonably cheap to run and operate. Production continued right through the 1930s with various sub variants appearing with the UBF-2 variant that is seen in Raiders being introduced between 1932 to 1934 and power coming from a 210 horsepower Continental R670 engine. In fact, the Navy at one stage also utilised two UBF variants of the Waco F-Series to use as parasite fighters on the airships USS Akron and USS Macon. Production for the Waco Series F continued into the 1940s, with the UPF-7 model being chosen as the aircraft for the Civilian Pilot Training Program in the United States. And the F-Series has been such a hit for Waco that in 1986 they reinstated production with the YMF-5. This was an updated design of the YMF model that appeared in 1934, and as of 2017 you can still buy new examples of the YMF-5. The UBF-2 model seen in Raiders though had the added addition of floats and carried the registration OBCPO. It is quite well known that the registration is a nod to Star Wars characters Obi-Wan Kenobi and C-3PO, but another fun fact is that the OB prefix is the prefix utilised for registrations for planes in Peru after 1928. So not only is it a fun little nod to Obi-Wan Kenobi, but it actually is somewhat historically accurate. As the movie progresses and Indy begins his chase after the lost Ark of the Covenant, he is forced to travel from America to Nepal in search of an old mentor of his. And in doing so, we get to see our second feature of an aircraft throughout the film. There is one scene showing Indy departing America where he is shown boarding a Pan American Airways flying boat. Now for this movie to be set in 1936, that flying boat would have been a Martin M130 Clipper.
The Martin M130 Clipper was designed to meet Pan America's search for an aircraft that could fly some 3,000 miles and carry a payload the equivalent of its own weight to serve on routes over the Pacific. The M130s were of all metal design except for the trailing edges, which were fabric covered. And three examples were built throughout 1935, with each machine costing some US $417,200 each. For comparison, the leading airliner in the world at the time was the DC-2. Its purchase cost was significantly less, at around 78,000 USD. The M130 were powered by four Pratt & Whitney Twin Wasp engines and four overnight trips could house accommodation for up to 30 passengers in three 10 berth compartments, while on day trips it would carry 46 passengers. After some initial test flying, the first M130 Clipper was handed over to Pan American Airways, this being the actual China Clipper. It is important to note that the China Clipper was actually the name of one of the M130 Clippers. However, during the 1930s, the name would become synonymous with any of the M130 Clippers, as well as sometimes, in general, large flying boats in the Pan Am's fleet. But just to re-emphasize, the China Clipper is just a single aircraft. Pan American Airways planned to utilize the enormous flying boats to open up regular routes across the Pacific. The first route chosen would take the Clippers from San Francisco to Manila, stopping at Honolulu, Midway, Wake Island, Guam and then Manila, and was specifically chosen as it stopped only in American territories. On November 22, 1935, the China Clipper took off from San Francisco Bay, marking the beginning of the first scheduled air mail service across the Pacific. It carried with it some 58 mailbags, which housed some 110,865 letters, which at the time marked the largest amount of mail to be carried by an aircraft. The China Clipper would arrive in Manila on November 29th after a flight time of 59 hours and 48 minutes, which for comparison was much faster than even the fastest steamships of the day, which would still take at least 15 days to make the journey and more likely closer to 20. This was followed in October 1936 with the beginning of the first regular Trans-Pacific passenger service. The other two clippers utilized by Pan America Airways would be the Philippine Clipper and the Hawaii Clipper. While the Hawaii Clipper would go missing in 1938 over the Pacific, by 1940 the Philippine Clipper and the China Clipper had amassed some 10,000 flying hours each. They would both be pressed into military service upon America's entry into the Second World War where they would be subsequently lost in separate incidents. The Philippine Clipper crashed into the side of a mountain when trying to land in San Francisco in January 1943, while the China Clipper sank upon hitting a boat during a night landing in the port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago in January 1945. Indy wouldn't have taken the China Clipper all the way to Nepal. Instead, he would have flown on it until the Philippines, where he would have changed to another aircraft to get him to Nepal. And here is another twist. The aircraft shown in the film is not a Martin M130 Clipper. Instead, it is a short S45 Solent Mark III, an English-built flying boat from the late 1940s, derived from the successful World War II flying boat, the Short Sunderland. The Solent had been developed late in the Second World War to succeed the Sunderland Mark III in service and first flew on the 30th of August 1944, originally designated the Sunderland Mark IV. A redesign of the tail and fin area, among other things, resulted in the type differing enough from the Sunderland Mark III to receive the designation the Seaford. The end of the war meant that the RAF never adopted the Seaford and thus it was converted into a civilian airliner where it received the new name of Solent. One of the updates in this process included the repositioning of the wing floats. They would primarily see service with British Overseas Airways Corporation BOAC until 1950, although some did fly with other airliners into the late 1950s. So how did a short Solent end up in Raiders? As we mentioned, by the beginning of 1945, all three M130 Clippers no longer existed. However, during the filming of Raiders, the production crew had tracked down a flying boat that was from the 1930s era of flight. Remember, Raiders is set in 1936. 
This though was some 5,000 miles away from Lucasfilm headquarters and thus it was decided that this was uneconomical to use for what ended up being only a very small amount of screen time. Instead, the production team were able to find a short silent flying boat under restoration in Oakland, California, much closer to Lucasfilm HQ. The machine was unair or seaworthy, and thus the production team had to utilize a mixture of matte paintings and composite photography to place the aircraft in the dock during the scene. The markings for Pan American Airways were added, as were much of the loading dock, through a glass matte painting, while the actors were filmed boarding the aircraft on the ground. This was combined together to create the scene. It then shows the aircraft flying off into the sun, and this was achieved through the use of a model. Fun fact, if you look closely in the background during this shot, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, which puts the aircraft taking off from San Francisco Bay. This is accurate for the China Clipper to be parting from. In pursuit of the Ark of the Covenant, Indy travels to Cairo, Egypt. And here we get another shot of another aircraft, this time being the legendary DC-3. The shots of the DC-3 utilized in Raiders actually aren't original footage. Instead, they come from the 1973 film Lost Horizon. I've already covered the history of the DC-3 on my channel, and its history is quite detailed and intricate. And as a result, I won't try and summarize it here. Instead, I'll link the video down below in the description and would highly recommend you check that out instead. The final aircraft in Raiders is the Nazis BV-38 Flying Wing. Upon Indy finding the Ark, the Nazis seize it from him and plan to transport it back to Germany on the Flying Wing. The aircraft we see in the movie is actually not a real aircraft, it's entirely fake and was specifically designed for the film. Sources vary slightly on who designed the aircraft, differing between designer Ron Cobb and production designer Norman Reynolds. It is said inspiration came from World War II flying wing designs such as the Horton H0229, the Northrop N1M and the cancelled German project, the Ally P04106. The aircraft was built in England by Vickers Aircraft Company and painted at EMI Alstree Studios before it was taken apart and shipped to Tunisia for filming. The aircraft was never intended to be airworthy. During the filming of the famous action-packed fight scene between Indy and a German mechanic that occurs around the flying wing, Harrison Ford tripped and fell where he was subsequently run over by the wheel of the machine. Luckily, due to the intense heat of the Tunisian desert, the rubber of the tyre was sticky and only ligament damage was done. Ford wrapped it in ice and carried on. This was Ford's first major onset injury. At the end of the scene, the flying wing is blown up and thus partially destroyed. Afterwards, it was left in Tunisia, where over time it was slowly dismantled by souvenir hunters before finally being bulldozed in 1991. At this point in the film, the whole final act is yet to play out. However, not another aircraft is featured, and as a result, that brings to an end today's video. If you have enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, and if you have any comments about Raiders in general, or the aircraft utilized, or just the video, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.